Every year since 1983, Car and Driver's editors select what we consider to be the 10 best cars on the market. We gather together all new cars, significantly refreshed cars, new cars that didn't make the competition last year, and finally the previous year's winners. Then we spend a week driving, evaluating, discussing, and arguing about our favorites. It's just a 90s car. I think a lot right, of it comes right. from the fact that you're listening to a really horrible box That is a spastic car. It is a spaz. I think it's predictable. I think that when it steps out, it's totally catchable. The wheelbase is long enough. Our 10 best cars are just that. Our 10 favorite cars under our $80,000 price cap. We figure if it's over $80,000, it better be great. Affordable greatness is much harder to find. This year we had over 60 cars in the competition. Collectively, we drove them over 15,000 miles. We had fast cars, slow cars, fuel efficient cars, practical cars, luxury cars, and even electric cars. Everyone was driven, evaluated, poked, prodded, and finally judged. I fully stand behind the PRZ and the ST. I would buy both of them. I would buy an ST. After the regular Focus made the 10 best list last year, we wondered if the more powerful Focus ST would make the list. And while the 10 best list doesn't have categories, we inevitably use the incumbent 10 best cars as a measuring stick to see how the new competition stacks up. As a result, we found ourselves comparing cars with similar missions, cars like the Focus ST and the Volkswagen GTI. I love that it really feels like the special hot Focus. It's not just like the one with a bigger engine. The car definitely torque steers. It's nothing like say a Saab Viggen, but it is there and some people think that that makes it a little too juvenile but you know I don't mind it I think bright paint aside that sort of juvenile character of the car is some of its appeal. The GTI has been on the 10 best list several times over the years and I think the reason for that is partially is how well rounded and well finessed it is. Some of the cars may be a little bit faster, some may have slightly better braking, but it's they're not as well-rounded. They seem to have peaks and valleys in their performance. The Accord Fusion, you know, we kind of see this as a pretty hotly contested battle in this year's 10 best. I mean, you know, if, uh, if necessary, we can make room for both of them on the list, but the Accord is, of course, the all-time 10 best champion, more victories than any other car. But the Fusion this year is better than ever and makes a pretty solid case for itself on the list, whether or not the Accord is also there. I really like the old Fusion Hybrid and the new one continues to impress. It's especially smooth when switching between gas and electric modes. A sedan should carry people in maximum comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the Accord just does that a little bit better. The great thing about this car is the structure is so good. And it really feels almost like a German car. Chevrolet's new Camaro, the ZL1, presented a potential threat to last year's 10 best winning Ford Mustang GT and Boss 302. But we also found ourselves comparing the ZL1 to the newest Mustang, the 662 horsepower Mustang Shelby GT500. Good action, short throws, and a pretty kick ass uh, shift up. Yeah, I like this more. It's just a little more livable. It doesn't, you know, it's loud, but it doesn't have this like sort of boominess that makes you tired. It's the clutch is really easy, the shifter's really easy, and of course, it has less power. So that's part of it, but the Shelby is very difficult to sort of keep the wheels from spinning and keep all that power from happening all at once. The BMW 3 Series has made the 10 best list every year since 1992. But even with a streak that long, there are no guarantees that the new 3 Series would be able to stay on the 10 best list. So of course with the new 3 Series and with some new competition this year from Cadillac and the ATS, the big question is, will the 3 Series get on the list again? It's lost a little bit of ground to its predecessor, but it is still one of the best sports sedans there is. It's still remarkably agile. There's nothing the car doesn't do well. Uh, most cars have 
you know, a few faults. And the 3 Series, it has faults relative to its predecessor, but there's nothing this car doesn't do well. This is one of the best turbo fours on the market, for sure. The thing about the 3 Series is its composure, and it does everything well. A direct competitor to the BMW 3 Series, Cadillac's new ATS aims to join the 3 Series, or even bump it off the list. The chassis on this thing is actually really good. Really precise, good roll control, decent ride quality magnetic ride control. This is the FE3 suspension, so it's uh, state of the GM art, and it's quite good. It's unfortunately let down a little bit by some powertrain stuff, like an extremely clunky shifter, which is unfortunate, and not that great a sounding engine either. Kind of like still got some work to do on this, unfortunately. After a week of testing, after all the arguments are exhausted, after all the donuts are gone, after we fill up our notepads, each editor is given a ballot and asked to give each car a score from 1 to 100. As in gymnastics, high and low scores are thrown out for each car. The scores are averaged and the 10 highest scores become the 10 best cars. After tallying the scores for the 76 cars in the competition, we arrived at Car and Driver's 10 Best for 2013. For the second consecutive year, we've made the Audi A6 and its brother, the A7, one of our 10 best cars. But this year, we've also added the more powerful versions, the S6 and the S7. With 420 horsepower on tap, the S models undercut the competition on price, but offer similar performance. Whether it's the regular or S version, sleek bodies cover stout structures. You get an unflappable chassis, accurate steering, and ample power. Audi now has an unbeatable luxury and sports sedan range. The redesigned BMW 3 Series returns to our 10 best list for the 22nd time. Recent comparisons and our 10 best tests revealed that the 3 Series didn't win as easily as it did in its previous generation, but it nevertheless delivers one of the most complete automotive packages on the market. Two turbocharged engines deliver improved fuel economy while providing enough power to embarrass some so-called sports cars. It might have given up some ground to competitors, but the balance between practicality and sportiness, between efficiency and power, between refinement and cost, keeps the 3 Series on the list for yet another year. The Ford Focus and Focus ST aren't cheap cars. Cheap cars endlessly remind you of inferiority. The Focus is a car that allows you to pay the least amount possible for something of superior grade. It might cost a few bucks more than the competition, but it's profoundly better. It's as if Ford built the Focus' structure to compete with Mercedes-Benz, the steering with Porsche, and the suspension with Lotus. Sure, Ford might not have hit every mark, but the reach upward lifts the Focus away from its competition. This year, we added the 252 horsepower Focus ST to the list. It's like a younger, louder, and hungrier Volkswagen GTI, and we fell hard for it. But even the lowliest Focus is suffused with character and quality far above its price. The Ford Mustang GT and Boss 302 returned to the 10 best list for 2013. It was by no means unanimous. Our European editor called the Mustangs wasteful, crude, unsophisticated, and automotive caricature of America. So when the polls opened, the rest of us voted for the Mustang's combination of power, performance, style, and value. The Mustang does more with less, can show up European blue bloods, and is all about fun. Maybe that's what our European editor meant to say. The redesigned Honda Accord is back on the 10 best list for a record 27th year. Not because it's a looker, not because it has a CVT now, not because it has a strut front suspension instead of control arms, nor is it because it just got direct fuel injection. The Accord makes the list because it manages to be practical and quietly wonderful. It is refined yet engaging, efficient yet willing to have fun. It drives with elegance and lightness. It's a machine that connects with drivers and passengers. Trust us, you'll only think it's an appliance until you drive it. Then you'll understand. The Honda Fit is a car that is neither pretty nor powerful, but it has something more rare, density of thought. 
There's more intelligence packed into the fit than cars twice its size. It's the defining small car, mechanically precise, paired of excess fat, respectful of gasoline, and graced with fluid handling. It's also hugely practical and affordable. Like a genie's lamp, it's small on the outside and cavernous inside. We'd like a bit more than the 117 horsepower, and we deem the electric version to be too expensive to make the 10 best list. But the fit's every component hums the song of high quality machinery, and that has seduced us yet again. The Mazda MX-5 Miata remains on our 10 best list for the 8th straight year because it shows how engineering rightness can transcend performance figures. The 167 horsepower engine is merely adequate, and the limits aren't that impressive by sports car standards. What keeps the Miata triumphant is not raw performance, but a balanced chassis that communicates every nuance to the driver through perfectly calibrated controls. And it makes the delights of a sports car and the freedom of a roadster affordable. Our expectations for the new Porsche Boxster were quite high. The previous Boxster made the list 13 times since the model was introduced in 1996. You can make that 14 now. The new car is roomier thanks to a longer wheelbase, but lighter than the last Boxster. The new design makes the Boxster look more exotic. And impressive performance numbers aside, the Boxster is a holistic sports car experience and an exercise in interactivity. Both engines sound thrilling as they rev towards their red lines. The steering is trusty, brake pedal feels secure, the chassis replete with grip. Great expectations have been met. The differences between the Subaru BRZ and the Scion FRS amount to some exterior colors and trim. Consequently, we consider them to be the same car. Now, a few editors criticize the lack of refinement as buzzy, noisy shortcomings. We all heard the buzzing, but it's merely a reminder that chassis development took the lead during this car's gestation. The steering communicates, it feels lithe, and the chassis ebbs and flows through understeer and oversteer better than some more expensive sports cars. Whether you drive the Scion or the Subaru, they both have a large helping of sportiness at a small price. Volkswagen's venerable Golf and GTI will be replaced in 2014 by the next generation Golf and GTI. That the current version makes the 10 best list on its last year of production speaks to the excellence of the Golf and GTI lineup. Offering nearly perfect driving fundamentals in base form, thrift in the turbo diesel variant, and performance in the GTI, these cars upend the underachiever's excuse that you can't please all the people all the time. And there you have it, the 10 best cars for 2013. Tell us about yours in the comments below.